Welcome everybody to the Dumb Sons of Bitches podcast. I am your host, Justin Smith, a.k.a. Teddy. Alongside is my good friend, Steve. And today we have the legend, Matthew Gillespie. The legend of the last podcast who he mentioned a bunch and cited him because he's just he's going to be a premier guest on this show. I'm glad I'm a cited source. He's the very and, first one. Yeah, go ahead and introduce yourself, Gibby. Uh, I'm an OG of the DSOB Snapchat group. Absolutely. One of the first founding members. Yes. yes. Um, I would like to say that this started out at a B-dubs. It did. It B-dubs. No it. fucking shit. It There's did. an Instagram <laughs> post. Picture, yes. At a UFC fight, I'm pretty sure is what we were watching. We was were doing something on a Thursday. Thursday. It was a Thursday. Did, was it a Thursday? It was a cheap it wing night, because that's the only time you see me at a B-dubs. Yep. <laughs> Uh, if, sorry, you scroll, if you scroll through my Instagram, it's, uh, it's like back in 2016. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, this is four years yeah, in the making. You mentioned yeah. that the last yeah, pod. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm a man of many names. Uh, Gibby. Do we want to like... Gillespie, Matt, whatever you want to call me. We have we all have nicknames. Do we want to explain why you're called Gibby? Yes. Well, I mean, we can explain why I'm called a lot of things. Well, Chew is the first one. Chew is Little League Baseball. Yes. Nickname. Uh, Joey Meredith and Audie Stevers. Our, our, our coach, yes. yes. Uh, one of the other founding members, uh, Dad, Joey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but go ahead. Started it. Go ahead and tell them why you're called Gibby. Gibby come from Logan Merrick's uh, in my ninth grade Spanish class. I was about 5'7", 230. <laughs> <laughs> was, it, was it because of Gibby from iCarly? 100%. <laughs> yes, he... He he didn't have any facial hair at the time. Probably. Nothing. I'm right, assuming. Right. I can't remember. Uh, but tenth grade, it was crazy because I jumped up to six one and stayed at two thirty and did no longer look like Gibby. But and the, the name, name stuck. 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 Yep. It was so crazy. There you go. Uh, after that, it was Gillespie because uh, whenever you play sports, everyone just calls you by your last name. Right. Uh, then Jablespi because people can't pronounce my fucking last name. <laughs> they also can't spell it. Uh, nope. I don't recall people calling you that. What? J- 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 Gillespie? Uh, Gillespie is a legit name. Tanner DeHart and Austin Cunningham are the two people I know who definitely call me that. Mm, okay. Yeah. And then Matt, I just shortened my name Matthew to Matt because it's easier to say and it's quicker, especially yeah. if you're doing something like construction. I usually, hey, Matt! I, yeah, actually, I usually yeah. call you Matt. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's where those names come from. There's plenty more. Cocksucker. Yeah. <laughs> Dumb son of a bitch. <laughs> Those are usually in a derogated like a derogatory term, but not always. Sometimes but it's endearing. Always, but they're always welcome, yes. <laughs> always with love. The, the reason we brought Gibby Gibster on the podcast today. That's a Hunter Smith one right there. Yeah. Gibby Gibster got invited onto the pod very soon after our last podcast. Because he was a... He was the main he, theme, he pretty much. He was a much. theme, and he wasn't even in the room. Like, he was a... Because he was correlated with the coronavirus. <laughs> and his viewpoints on it, which he was a... Coron- what do you call it? A coronavirus truther? Is that what you call someone who doesn't believe what everyone else believes a truther? Or, I would say skeptic. <laughs> skeptic, yeah. I was very skeptical of what reports were being reported. Yes, and we brought him on here to explain his sides, because he most recently sort of changed his thought process because on it. when this corona thing started happening in china there was a bunch of articles coming out oh this is going to be the next you know uh sars or uh what is the african uh so uh they said ebola yeah um basically uh, sars and this are they're from the same family yes. of mm-hmm. corona in fact sars mers and then this covid 19 yeah. uh they're all very uh Similarly related, right. um, MERS is actually Middle Eastern. Mm-hmm. That's where it originated from. Well, we had there's a bunch of articles coming out saying this is going to be the next like disaster, and we kept sending these articles in the dumb sons of bitches uh, group chat, and we'd be like, Matthew, do you think this is serious? And you would always deny it, and then more articles articles would come out week by week, and we'd be like, is this serious? Uh, Matthew, do you think this is serious? It was like an ongoing thing until, you know, it hit the, the U.S. and now it's like we're in a pandemic. We're in all quarantined. Yeah, we're locked down. Yeah. <laughs> so so we just brought him on. Yep. We're, we're going to talk about a litany of things, but... This, we got to get this out of the way. We got to get this out of the way. <laughs> nice right. SAT word, by the way. <laughs> You'll hear a lot of words like that. I try to, you know... Put on an image that I'm more intelligent than I really am. Oh, I'm one dumb motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. So go ahead, Matthew. If you wanna, if you wanna 
take it away and explain your viewpoints on the subject. Well, it recently changed. Um, not so much the seriousness of how the I feel about the virus. I still think the virus is not as deadly as it is presented. See, everyone keeps presenting the deaths. The recovery rate's really good. You know, the people you see get sick and die are those who are either really sick with something else, mostly respiratory issues, right. um, like Lovers. pneumonia, smokers, bad lungs, asthma. But also you see people who are obese, hypertension, um, mm-hmm. cancers, which uh, lower your immune system, of course. Right. Things like that. Um, you see them at risk. But a lot of young people you don't you don't see. Mm-hmm. And if you do see it, um, they get sick and then they get better or they don't even show any symptoms. I believe it was like 80% of young people are asymptomatic, mm-hmm. which they don't show any sort of symptoms. Which is wild. That's crazy. Yeah. Now, uh... One of my big issues actually with my work right now is they're taking our temperature outside. A lot of young people. Oh, are really? Right there. Every day before you go Every inside? Every day we have to, you have to check goodness. in. But the thing is, it's a lot of young people and a lot of old people. No one really in between the 30 to 40 range, I would say. Mm-hmm. And I made a very excellent point. I thought that was if a lot of us are asymptomatic in here, and that means we're not showing a temperature of some sort, or maybe even a slightly increased temperature, but nothing that deems going home. Mm-hmm. How are we not getting these? Like we're exposing these elderly people, right? So you know, yeah, I'm like, afraid to go to my uh, great grandma. She's 90 years old. Yeah, see, that would be wise just to avoid that. Yeah. Um, but the reason I didn't take it so serious in the first place is because uh, just the numbers, the numbers didn't match up, and they're not. They're now figuring that they they really don't the match. Projections up. are kind of out. They were out. They were outlandish at first, but you got to sort of. Prepare for Aim the for worst, the worst, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you know, overproducing on respirators and masks, it's not bad. Mm-hmm. It's not any sort of detriment to the United States. Yeah, and in I want to get into like the supply things later. Uh, oh, why they come from China? Not even just that, the numbers of supplies and why they're so short. But if you want to keep going, yeah. well, well, we'll just go back to like, we'll start with China first. Uh, first, the, they're reporting. So, if anyone has should be pissed at anyone, it should be at China. Because their under-reporting has made it far worse than this actually could be. They're keeping things from us, from the world. 100%. Like, uh, I mean, that's no doubt. They, they keep, they're very closely guarded. Right. Uh, and they keep things very tight to their chest. Yeah. And when stuff does get out, it's denied very quickly. Or the blame is shifted to uh, other parties. In our political system in our country. It eats it up. It yes. loves it. It loves conflict. Yes. Um, Device. Yes. And in fact, it, I think it, one is China and two are the political parties, Republicans and Democrats. Right. Mm-hmm. Three is the people in charge of the CDC and the WHO. Mm-hmm. Those three are the top issues. That they, they're the, Those are the three like parties who <coughs> should be replaced, fired, and blamed. They are controlling the narrative. Well... If you watch the WHO, so the WHO is influenced by the UN, which is a whole nother debate yeah. on why it's a useless piece of shit. The UN? <laughs> yes. Um, usually, just a side tangent, the UN actually doesn't do a fucking thing. They just meet up in New York. And- well, they just write a bunch of papers, but no problems get solved. Yeah. Uh, uh, the genocides in Africa, yeah, we just stood by and watched a report about it. Yeah. Mm. yeah, and guess what? You know, Lots of Hootsies and Tootsies killed each other. Yeah. But, yeah, go ahead. So, the WHO is influenced by um, geopolitical politics. And if you watch the interview where he refuses to say the head of the WHO, I believe that may be a uh, – he, he is someone high up in the board of the WHO. He may not be the head. Uh, he refused to talk about how well Taiwan handled this. Now, if anyone is up to date on their politics, especially geopolitical, they know that Taiwan is not a state. A nation state. I'm sorry, I should say a nation state. Yeah. Um, they are a state within China. Yeah. So every time they come up for statehood in the UN, uh, Russia and China both shut them down. Now, mm. he refused to say Taiwan. The Chinese president. No, the head of the WHO. Oh, I, 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 I saw something like that on Twitter about... So if you look up the, the interview with this woman who's talking about how well, and she's like, oh, so how well did you think Taiwan handled their... Uh, the issue with the coronavirus. He would not say Taiwan. Mm. He uh, seemed to act like he couldn't hear the question oh, okay. and then said, let's move past it, and then disconnected and reconnected. See, that's what you can't have with this wow. time. So, that right there is an issue. Yeah. Uh, the CDC uh, drug their feet 
and didn't privatize the ability to do research on or help assist privatize the research on the coronavirus. They also underestimated it in the fact that its ability to uh, spread, which is uh, an issue, but can be controlled and handled. And so now all they're telling us to do is wear masks and gloves. Here's the thing. Healthcare professionals change their gloves every time they touch a patient. You going out there and wearing rubber gloves all day at, like, and not changing your gloves is actually spreading it. Yeah, it will collect. Yes. And same with the mask. You know, I see people out here wearing these really small masks that mm-hmm. only formed like their chin and their bridge of their nose. Uh, when you do go into surgeries and everything, there are masks that you tie behind your head and they come all the way back to where almost your ears are. They cover your, like, any facial hair. They too. cover all the way around your face, mm. basically. Basically to your, the, where your mandible connects to your, um, the rest of your skull. Wow. And for the listeners, Matthew knows a lot about this shit because don't you have a degree in, like, the medical field? So, uh, just a little bit of background. Uh, I went all the way up to, I have 100 credits out of 120 in human nutrition, food, and exercise, including human anatomy and physiology, epidemiology, and infectious diseases. Mm. And I'm also a certified EMT. And as far as national security goes, I, I had a minor in national security. So he knows his shit. He knows his shit about the world. That's why we have him on, and we're going to ask him a fuck ton of questions because we're <laughs> dumb sons of bitches, and we need to know the info. And he's taking off his... his uh... Buffalo, Grateful Dead-themed <laughs> buffalo shirt. So he can get ready, dive deep into the shit. It's hot in the dungeon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is hot in here. It was cold, but now I'm getting warm. But that's because Matthew's throwing heat at us. <laughs> It's getting hot. So go ahead, Gibby. So keep going. I mean, there's other issues with this as well. The, uh, you know, we talked about socialized and privatized healthcare, and how socialized healthcare is really only advantageous in certain, uh, like, circumstances, uh, as far as being able to get a reduced price <laughs> and still quality um, healthcare appointment. I believe that is very important. I think that's something that Americans need. Mm -hmm. However, you want competition and privatization amongst uh, the hospitals so that way that the price is already is competing to be better anyway. And what really needs to happen is breaking up of the trust of the hospitals. And I'm talking about the monopolies that they have, not the trust between the the patient and the doctor. Uh, Hospitals are outrageously overpriced. Mm -hmm. Imaging costs... If you go to the one in Christiansburg, it's going to cost you several thousands of dollars. To get an MRI? To get an MRI. You can go get a similar quality MRI in Bluefield, Virginia for $500. Wow. And hospitals like to stamp out private clinics like that and just private practice clinics in general that because they want their business. I mean, it's just it's what happens. You know, but with socialized health care, you, know, you may not get an you may get your appointment, and you may go, but then it may be six, seven months before you go back for a follow up, and then you're dead by that point. Jesus. What does it really do then? Right. And I mean, it's it's. I've also uh, been to Honduras with the Global Medical Brigade. So if you mm-hmm. go to Tech, and you're interested into an awesome trip where you go and you help out local peoples, those who are definitely well below your like the standard Poverty living. Rate. That, oh, it's it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, we went to one village. Uh, where uh, they basically said, if you have a car, you can go to a hospital. You may not be able to afford it, but they'll take you in. But then there's one bed for every 10 people oh, in, pri- in, in socialized hospitals down in Honduras. Now, if you have a lot of money, you can go to a private hospital, but you have to have a lot of money, and that's really hard to come by. Mm-hmm. $5 down in Honduras is worth a lot of money. Did you see any like crazy shit when you were over there? What, like what? Just anything. What was the wildest thing you saw? So the first day we were down there, right? Oh my goodness! We're uh, story time. We're going right to the, our, our 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 hotel. Mm-hmm. Not a hotel, I should say. It was a compound, basically. Everyone down there lives with walls around them, um, mm-hmm. barbed wire on the top most of the time. We're going to this place called the Valley of the Angels. It's about an hour and a half outside of Tegucigalpa, which is the capital of Honduras. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the capital of Honduras, very modern. Burger Kings, Domino's whatever paved roads running water for the most part then on the outskirts you have your favelas Uh you know 10 roof houses and stuff like that 30 minutes outside the city you're on dirt roads and people live in huts Mm. now granted you get to the towns 
and bricks brick buildings there are are nice those who have shops and then the churches are really nice like Cantaranas, which is where we stayed at or it was a place we went through say that one more time Cantaranas. Cantaranas. <laughs> i tell you they say it like i don't know I, yeah. uh also it's not honduras it's honduras <laughs> 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 but i say it because if you say honduras you sound like a jackass yeah. like, <laughs> if you're not hispanic <laughs> you sound like an asshole. but however my buddy Juan i work with he definitely says like if you're talking to me say honduras <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Juan. Juan yeah. and his dad also won Juan jr it's no, j and jj oh j and jj anyway so we get down there and we're in our bus um, we're going on the Sturt Road, and there are no lines down there. Everyone just drives on the least potholed side of the road. And all of a sudden, this truck with armed federales comes by, and they got these masks down, masks down, black balacabas, and they're rolling up, full amp, like full kit, guns up. Holy movie sh- type shit. It's a movie type shit. Yeah. They jump off, and these, looks like local police had stopped these two, what I would assume to be drug dealers, based on the uh, shit that was laying out in the road. And they... I mean, these these dudes jumped off the truck, threw them on the ground. I mean, cuffed them. I what mean, was, how did you feel about that? I thought it was awesome. <laughs> you were scared. I was the you only were hyper. I was the only one who was like, "Did anyone else get that on video? Did you see that shit? <laughs> it was crazy." Everyone else was freaking out. Yeah. But I mean, like one of our security guys, who's a driver. I mean, he worked with the Honduras. Uh, pol- uh, he was in the military. He was airborne qualified, trained with our special forces. Was a sniper. Um, did treetop level jumps and into the jungle to fight narcotics, narcos, and mm-hmm. sicarios. So he's just a fucking savage. Well, anyone who knows who's anything about uh, static line jumping is you need over, I believe it's 80 meters of fall, free fall, and they're doing it like at 60 or 40, mm-hmm. which is basically you have just enough time to open your, your chute open and then brace for the landing. Jesus Christ. And they're doing this and then continuing on with gunfights in the jungle. And then they're staying out there and patrolling for like a week. It's crazy. God. It's, it's wild. It's so crazy. Like, how how long were you over there? I can't remember. Nine days. Nine days. So it, so for the first three days you do medical. And we were down there doing medical work. And you see some of the saddest. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, people come in and you think they're like just vitamins are, are, are a gift to them. Um, you were around a lot of kids, weren't you? Too? How, we how were. about clean water? Clean water? How important? Bro, if you got clean water down there, you were a fucking god. You're set. Oh my gosh. You're set. Clean water, regular food, the ability to just eat regularly is a, is a miracle. See, we're taking that shit for granted right now. That's Absolutely. why people who say the United States, I don't want to say we're the greatest country because we got our own issues, but we are fucking awesome. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you what, I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. I wouldn't either. Right. And Especially around this, like, what's happening right now. We have it good. So let me tell you the saddest story about when I was down in Honduras. We had one male doctor. Everyone else that we worked with was, was female. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Two female dentists, two female, or, sorry, three female doctors, an OBGYN female, and uh, two female pharmacologists. Uh-huh. And we're down there, and they bring in this nine-month-year-old girl. And the mom won't tell us what's wrong with her. But the male doctor, he, he sees her. Very professional young man, I would like to say. Uh, goes to examine her. And he knows that he has, she has some sort of issues uh, around her anal cavity. And he goes to check it out. Freaks out. Completely flips. She's nine months old. Mm. The mom is now freaking out. The doctor's like, well, what's going on? Why is she not letting me look at her? Like, what is it? And it took him and two female doctors to realize that the father was sexually assaulting his nine month old daughter so that's not the worst part the worst part is had we not went to that village they said it could have went on for years and no one would have known god jesus christ that's tough that's that's a tough story to start the podcast with exactly that is tough god god damn jesus (laughs) Uh, but you know, but there was also light moments. I mean, we're out there and we're playing soccer with the kids Mm -hmm. and they love it. I mean, they're just having a hell of a time and they're awesome. The kids were awesome. The, I mean, you talk about people, I mean, we saw one boy drag his brother around who was on a plastic bottle with just some string. It was a two liter Coke bottle and he made a makeshift sled for him. Oh, fuck. And he was just having a, a hell of a time. I mean, you talk about people who don't really know any better, you know, ignorance is bliss Mm -hmm. and I'm gonna be honest, I, but I mean, 
just wonderful people. I mean, they just, they gave everything to us, and I, I loved it. I loved them. I would go back. I would so, do. this conversation started with poor health care systems, and we were talking before we started about, like, countries in Africa when it comes to dealing with the coronavirus and how it's not reported and how devastating it could be to them. Well, the, the black community here in the United States is the one who's actually suffering the most casualties. In the United States. In the United States. Now, imagine in a country in countries where mostly the people at the top are the ones with all the money. Say, like, Nigeria. Well, actually, that's one of the better countries. It is, yeah. So if we're looking at, like, the Congo, where uh, it's bad, bad, or South Sudan, mm -hmm. which is now its own country, uh, which is already going through financial crisis because of the civil war in Sudan. Mm -hmm. I, I bet you their numbers are so high that... See, I, I didn't even know the coronavirus had touched Africa. That's how poorly reported it is. Africa right. and the Middle East are getting wrecked. I remember when the, the virus first came out and it was talking about Iran. Iran was like the, one of the four countries that started reporting cases. Well, see, MERS in Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, which is another version of the corona... It's a, it's a coronavirus, Yeah. which it's, it's it originates in the Middle East, uh, was really harsh on Middle Eastern countries. Now imagine getting two versions of the coronavirus. Jesus Christ. MERS, which is specifically for people of Middle East uh, like origin as far as like where they live, and then this one, which has come from China. Right. Uh, and like I said, those at the top, China is definitely to be blamed. Yes. And then our political leaders, all of them. Our the political media. leaders currently, well, our political leaders are currently just getting bashed. And I, when I say that, I mean Donald Trump. Well, let me tell you something. When, Here we go. Here we go. When you decide to play, don't call it the Chinese uh, flu or virus, instead of being like, how do we assist either A, China in containing it, or B, stop it from getting from here? It's from China. Why is MERS called the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome and no one has an issue with it? It was called the Wuhan flu. During the That's kind of a joke, but... <laughs> <laughs> I saw that on Twitter. But if you say, like, the Wuhan virus or the, the Chinese flu, why? what's wrong with that? It's the Spanish flu is the Spanish flu. German measles are German measles. Right. Right. So... You're having a problem with that. What's wrong with that? What's... Yeah, if you're an ass and you go, all Asian people have the fucking virus. Well, you probably do too, jackass. I mean, come right. on. Well, a lot of people are concerned that uh, Chinese Americans will get bullied or assaulted because um, the president said Chinese virus. So the media is like, oh, he said that. So people on the streets are going to yell at the attack, Chin Asian, attack people. Asian people. Even if they're not Chinese. So, right. But, what hap but what's the actual statistics reporting on that? How many people have actually been attacked based of, of Chinese Am or Asian American know. descent? It's, it's just fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's fear mongering. But I mean... Has it actually happened? I mean, you would you would know about it, right. you know, if it if it was something severe, you would see it reported, especially mm -hmm. on the news, because it would just go along with narratives. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying the left is the only one to blame for this. Also, right. I think the right and their ignorance is uh, also to blame, uh, as far as just being like, oh, "I'll be fine. I'll be fine." Yeah, I'll be fine, and then fucking Rand Paul's in the yeah yeah you know denying a budget on just increasing how many supplies we have. That's that's dumb. That's like that's big stupid. Mm -hmm. Because okay, so we don't use all these supplies on something else. Cool. What else? You know how many underfunded hospitals we have in the United States? Mm -hmm. a, a lot. I mean, there's a reason they send uh, people in the SOCOM, which is the special operations um, community. It's a medical course that all special forces, uh, pararescue jumpers. Basically, if you're going to be a medic in special operations, you have to go. And serve in these undertreated areas. So Philadelphia, Florida, um, over in the West Coast, I think it's L.A. These are all super underserved hospitals. So what's wrong with sending people and supplies there? I don't see an issue with it. Another thing I want to talk about, I see on Twitter, the number of ventilators, why they're not getting to certain hospitals. Why is that an issue? Why are ventilators so under-resourced? The reason ventilators are typically under resources is you don't need a ventilator unless you need assisted breathing. Mm -hmm. Most people who come in don't need assisted. You're in a car crash and you got a collapsed lung, you might need assisted breathing. Mm -hmm. uh, you have something to where you can't um, 
forcibly move your muscles to breathe, you're going to need assisted breathing. So what you're saying is ventilators aren't like... Aren't as common in hospitals as one would think. Yeah. They're common. They're just reserved. Not abundant. They're, not as essential not as abundant. other things. Yeah, because, you know, if you need a ventilator, you're probably dead. Right. Or cl- on your way Seriously, out. Seriously, yeah. And you see numbers like New York hospitals need 30,000 ventilators. Yeah. We live... This is just my perspective. Like, we live in the United States. Why can't we get hospitals 30,000 ventilators? See, I just, I just don't understand. Well, see, that's what Trump actually just did. He actually forced GE to start producing ventilators. Uh, didn't he? I don't know if he you know, see, personally did this, but other technology companies are now having to switch what they make. Like, yes. Didn't Tesla start producing certain supplies? Or... Well, we, in, we enacted the National Defense Act. Which means companies like Ford, GE, they get a tax break, but they also means they have to meet the budget and request of the national, the national uh, defense um, summons. Basically, they have to just do what we say, Sweet. and they get a sort of break on their taxes and stuff like that. But they're helping the greater good. Yeah, yeah. Bas- when we interact, we uh, in times of war, we've enacted this um, national defense act. Back like post nine eleven, you know, we didn't have body armor or armored Humvees. And all that was like, we need to get those out and activate the National Defense Act, and and then areas and businesses start making. Um, these. So it's like, it's like, oh shit, we've a, been caught flat-footed. Let's make all we can. This is like a you know treated like a viral war where every, it's all hands on deck. Like you have to make supplies for the war, regardless of what you make. Basically, yeah, but it's it's it can happen. Um, I think we may have enacted it after the Nash, the after the recession back. In, uh, after the market collapsed. Yeah. Are you talking about the recent one? No, no, no. Back in, back in the um, 08, maybe? Was it the 08 recession? Right before Obama became president. Right? Yes. Uh, this, I think we enacted it then just because it creates more jobs because yeah. you need more people to work. I don't know if that's true. Don't quote me on it, but I think that sounds like something we would do because yeah. it helps flood the uh, market with jobs. Okay. Now I want to get into like who to blame for all this. You know, China. China's in the headlines for, you know... I believe underreporting deaths and cases. Uh, well, but China is definitely at number one on the list. And right. They, they definitely lie about a lot of their information. They lie about almost everything. Uh, definitely, it's coming out now that the the U.S. intelligence, as far as that we've gathered, it shows that they are definitely lying about the numbers. It's definitely higher than what they reported. In fact, they probably just threw a dart at the wall and was just like, "That number sounds no, good." See, Eighty thousand uh-huh. sounds good. You know, the United States will beat that in a few weeks. Well, you know. China's healthcare system is just awful. It's just if you don't have any money there, then you have basically no, no health care. No, yeah, nothing. Uh, you know, there's so many provinces too, and like China lies about a lot as far as including the the concentration camps of the Uyghur Muslims. Yes. They're out in the Gobi Desert. It's mm-hmm. where they typically live, kind of mind their own business for the most part. And China is definitely a, a part of the get on the train or get run the fuck over. Mm-hmm. And like Islam does not go with China. No. It's just they don't coexist together. No, and they and China's so big it just includes a region. Well, they did that and in the lower part of Mongolia as well. Mm-hmm. And in fact, there's been a lot there's always been uprisings in Mongolia because they want to go back to Mongolia. But China doesn't let them and they always suppress it. In fact, it's interesting because the Mongolia that's a part of China, it speaks Mongol. Yeah. speaks the, the the native language while actually the people of Mongol, Mongolia the country speak a modified Russian language and they use the acrylic alphabet but anyway back to China line about the 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 camps it's a seven million population and they imprison one million of them and so it's a modern day almost Holocaust oh hundred percent it's it's definitely genocidal it's definitely I mean they force women to have abortions and then they'll rape them of any age they've been known to castrate males um abuse i mean just physically and mentally beat down people based solely on their life choices as far as religion goes is that all of china (sighs) no i would definitely say that's definitely the 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 communist party part of china Mm -hmm. most people in china just mind their own business now there's different types of chinese people the i do not remember the type there's like like there's tribes in like Vietnam, like the Hmong people and and stuff like that. There's different 
groups of people in China, and definitely some, I forget who are on top. If you're not a part of that group, then you're definitely not a... Usually people part of that group are part of the Communist Party, and I cannot remember what they're called. There's a certain origin, like an ethnic descent of people. Hmm. So, you know, China's... China's in the headlines a lot here recently. Well, we should be like, fuck China. Uh, Also, we should also learn that we shouldn't let China make our products as far as medical products. Let them make all the t-shirts and iPhones that they want. Don't let them make our medical products. Because actually, to do business in China, they require you to backsell the intellectual property. So it means you have to do all... If you do the research here, like to make this iPhone, Mm -hmm. we make and do the research here in the Valley, in, in California. Now, we want to ship it and have the business made in China. So for us to do that, we have to give China the intellectual property to make the... We are uh, looking at the bottom of the hill. We thought that Matthew's truck was about to be towed. <laughs> it looks... What in know. the world is that? I don't that? know what kind of truck that is, but it's not a tow truck. No, those are... They look like... Uh, construction. Construction or pavement trucks. Yeah, they are. I was a little concerned because he selling. parked at the bottom of the hill at a... Uh, like, he is going to have to run down there. Uh, yes. And it's a very uh, hellacious driveway. Oh, you might roll I an ankle. You got, you got cowboy boots on, too? Yeah, yes, I do. Yep. Um... Anyways, back to what we were discussing. So to do to do business in China, they have to uh, you have to sell the intellectual property, which means they get all our research for free, basically, and they make our product. Well, in turn, they know how to not only do the process, but also have the ability to adapt the process, which is what China's good at. They do. Mm-hmm. They've been doing it for thousands of years. I mean, ever since China was a unified group of people, basically, they've been doing this. In fact, these last hundred years is the only time we've actually seen the downfall of China. Ever since the Opium Wars in the 1890s. And that's when the British took Hong Kong and Japan invaded. Um, During the mainly, war? Yeah. Right before the World War II? World War One, They had claimed uh, areas in China. Actually, it was back in the 1890s, rolled right up into the 1900s, then World War One break broke out. And I think Japan kind of backed off a little bit, but then they made huge gains in post-World War One. Um, in fact, if you've ever, uh, I would recommend you go out and, and read The Rape of Nanking. If you ever think the Nazis did anything horrible, The Rape of Nanking, Nanking and Unit 731, two excellent uh, tr- look-up choices that you should uh, inundate yourself with. Mm. There's a reason why China and Japan hate each other. Mm. Nanking was the capital of China back before Beijing was, and when Japan took over, the Japanese commander believed that it would be an easy victory. And instead, the Chinese held out for, I believe, 12 days. And it infuriated the Chinese commander, or the Japanese commander so much that um, he made all the Chinese soldiers that were there when they surrendered. He was like, go ahead, run. Run it. All you gotta do is cross the river, and you're free. As he executed them all with machine gun fire. And then forcibly raped women. Uh, if you couldn't be raped, as far as like an old woman, um, there were reports of people sticking broom poles up orifices. Um, murdering pregnant ladies, ripping their babies out. I remember you telling me about this once. It's absolutely horrendous. And in fact, a a German associated with the Nazi party actually created a safe zone in Nanking to actually protect the people of Nanking. So talk about... This is irony. such a dark fucking podcast. <laughs> it is. Episode 2, we're going fucking deep. Well, then Unit 731, like, everyone talks about uh, Hermann Goring and how such a bastard he was and he was do not get me wrong do not mistake that I don't think I think what the Nazis and uh, these evil fucks the did Soviets. yo the Soviets were horrible <laughs> but Unit 731 in Japan um, would test people uh, they they wanted to see like how lung capacity works so they would just put people in pressurized chambers and watch their lungs explode oh my god biological warfare or They're just Heartless. They're just test dummies. Oh, the, that's all people were to them, were just test dummies, especially if you were of Chinese or Korean descent. I didn't know any of this. Yes. Jesus Christ. Yes, the history is very dark. It's very brutal. See, and we're Chi- bringing it on this podcast. In China, you know, recently, they, they're, not, they're involved in everything. They're involved in the NBA. So, uh, in fact, almost all the studios in Hollywood are under Chinese authority. That's why you see all these premieres of movies in 
Exactly. In Shanghai. In and... fact, if you look on the new Top Gun 2 trailer, Tom Cruise used to have a Taiwanese flag on his flight suit jacket. Really? It was removed for Top Gun 2. Yes. Wow. In fact, we used to recognize Taiwan as the capital of China all the way up until 75, 76, at which point the three original leaders of China in the Communist Party, um, Mao Zedong, his wife, and then his second-in-command, they all passed away. And threes are the big nu- uh, number of change in China. So things happen in threes in China. And so that signifies change. Mm. So... Uh, and then at that point, we recognize Beijing as the, the capital of China. So, I mean, you know, China right now, they're buying up a lot of real estate market. You know, a lot of people don't know that. In our country? Oh, yeah. 100%. And in fact, there's an interesting documentary on Netflix about how Chinese businesses are buying American factories and they're having to figure out on how to work with American workers because we are so used to a a really actually comfortable work environment compared to the sweatshops and well not even that it's like you live and die by the factory mm-hmm. in China I mean you're there 12 hours a day 7 days a week it's 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 very militaristic I mean that is what it is based slavery. upon I mean, you could say it's a modern form of some sort of indentured servitude uh, for slavery, but it's almost, it, it's more of an indoctrination into believing um, j- just how great the business is and even the country. Right. And in fact, like I said, China plays a marathon and we play sprints, you know. And the only good thing about dictatorships and like parties that stay in power for a long period of time is they, their policies stay consistent. You know, the downfall of democracy and republic is every four years our policies change. Nothing can really get done. No. Uh, it's actually a famous saying during the Vietnam War. Um, it was not Ho Chi Minh, not Uncle Ho who said it, but it was his second in command. I cannot remember it. Uh, Zop, General Zop. He said, uh, oh, the Americans change their mind every four years. All we have to do is outlast so his thoughts on that war was... <laughs> He's just making fun of us. All, well, all he thought was, all we got to do is outlast the will of the people in America, and that changes every four years. And he mm-hmm. was right. And at most, every eight. At, yeah. So, you know, very interesting, I mean, as far as, like, how our political system set up. And it, it's not so more about the people anymore. It's more about how, how much influence you uh, can gain and have over certain areas of either production or just basically influence. In fact, there's a saying on Wall Street, or not Wall Street, but in Capitol Hill, uh, he's got very steady hands. I believe if you've listened to that Eric Weinstein podcast, the Joe Rogan one, he talks about having very steady hands. He learned that on Capitol Hill. So it means if something's happening and he's got very steady hands, he's trustworthy and he's not going to show his hand, right. basically. So it's, you know, it's, in fact, it's so funny because I don't know if you listened to Andy Stumpf's Clear Hot podcast. No, no, no. He had Jocko on there. Jocko's a fucking legend. He is. And they were talking about how uh, when we make things in the United States, how... So, you know, you are talking about ventilators earlier. I, I would be interested to see on what senators got what part of the ventilator to make. So, when they pieced out portions of body armor back in the invasion of Iraq, they pieced out body armor and Humvee body armor or Humvee armor, and they were like, all right, you get the doors, and you get the windows, and then you get the actual gear to, like, the thing that holds the body armor, personal body armor, and you actually get the personal armor to make, and they split it up based on their uh, their areas, basically, the senator's areas that they had, and they made, th- made it in those factories. Oh, wow. Yeah. So... Very interesting. So, also, when someone says uh, it's military spec, uh, that means it just you're buying something that the lowest bidder got a one on. Mm. Everything that the military makes is based on the lower bidder, the lowest bidder. So, back to reality <laughs> after we just went down this China rabbit hole. My mind which is just... I needed because <laughs> I don't know shit about China. I want to get back into why Matthew changed his mind about coronavirus. And who did he talk to and what did he see? So, because we didn't persuade him at all. <laughs> so again, it's not technically the virus 
that I've changed my mind about as far as its infectability and its death rate and everything like that. It's more about the incompetency, incompetency of the system that caused me to be like, oh shit, this is actually serious because it's pointed out very important flaws in our system. And that's why I think it's become more serious than I ever could have thought. Mm-hmm. 100%. When I realized they canceled the NCAA men's basketball tournament, hey. March Madness, I knew shit was real. You can count on uh. fucking WrestleMania to be there, though. God damn! <laughs> God damn! <laughs> WrestleMania was here, baby! <laughs> but no, it, the, the, the flaws in the system is what really scares me. Imagine if this was a 70% death rate, just for a second. Just imagine if you got it. There's almost a 70% chance that you fucking died. Dude, if there was a yeah. 70% death rate, people would go kill themselves, too. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But just imagine. Just imagine how fuck... Like, if we handled it the same way, that's... Like, I mean, I can't even describe on how... Like, how big of a catastrophe that it is. Like, it's catastrophic. Like, it's a... Na- that is a national... That's the end of the world. disaster. I mean, 100%. And if we handle something... Worse than this? I keep hearing that. Like, this is the, uh, what did Weinstein, or is that his name? Yeah, uh, Weinstein. That's not Weinstein, it's Weinstein. Weinstein, he yeah. said, uh, yeah, this was the great nap, and we woke up. And it really was. And, like, what? Are we, how are we going to react to the next one? It really was. I mean, we've been saying, I mean, back into 09, the H1N1, which infected 10 Millions. million Americans. 10 million, million Americans. People. Just a 10 million Americans alone. Yeah. Um, I remember the vaccines for that. That should have been a wake-up call. But it wasn't. You went back to sleep. So we're going to let... We really shouldn't let this one slide. Fuck no. And, like, if it, we do... It, it canceled everything. That's what I'm we saying. We love. That's what I'm saying. If, <laughs> the H1N1 should have really canceled a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And now we're going to... I mean, we we shut down the country, which arguably should have been done sooner. People who are saying that canceling flights out of China was bad... Even Joe Biden's coming around to that now. That that like it's fucking stupid. That he that comes around, that. goes around. <laughs> That's because he can't remember the same conversation. He can't remember shit. Which conversation he's having? No. He doesn't know what state he's in. Sometimes. No. I love you, Vermont. He was in Connecticut. <laughs> I I guarantee you, he doesn't tweet. 100%. Those tweets? No way. It That's is, not him. Definitely someone. Well, Trump. Those are definitely his fucking tweets. Yeah. He's coked up on for sure. On it's Twitter. hilarious. It's it's oh no, he's all up on Sudafed, baby. That UK Sudafed. <laughs> Which is basically... He's awake at 4 a.m. on something. Sudafed. <laughs> Sudafed? <laughs> Fun fact, Sudafed is one OH no group away from being methamphetamine. I wonder what he'd be like on Zen. Trump would be fine on Zen. Wouldn't do anything. <laughs> I bet it would not do a damn thing. He'd be thing. fine on Zen. Yeah. He I, don't even drink, but he's fucking drunk. I bet up. you he pops a cup of Addies, though, and just is at it. Yeah. He's <laughs> to be when you're president. Oh, 100%. You know what's you funny, though? Sleep. He hasn't aged. He doesn't look like he's aged. You remember Obama yeah. aged really bad? Obama? Or mm. not even that. Biden has aged during the primaries. Yes. Dude. How is he going to age when he's the president? Yeah, he had like a facelift. He looks like a madman right now. To be now. honest, the Democrat Party has really shot themselves in the foot. And I'm not a Bernie supporter by any sort of the standard. It should have been him, though. Holy shit. Like, that man got fucked twice. Yes. <laughs> twice. Like, it, first off, they pick Hillary Clinton over him, and she's the biggest warmonger amongst anyone on Capitol Hill. She's a candidate. She's a fucking criminal. Yeah. Yeah, when you want to institute a no-fly zone over Syria, that means you shoot down Russian jets. She has no interest but lining her own pocket. And it's not her family who's going to go fight and die in Russia. <laughs> no. Fuck Jesus no. Christ. And the way then, you, the, How you put it that way just makes me hate her even more. <laughs> I mean, and by the way, when we're talking, we are not the biggest Trump supporters at all. Oh, no, not at all. We're and not, we're not we hate everybody. We're at least not, I do. We're not 100%. supporters of our political system right now. I talk yeah. about constantly overthrowing the government. <laughs> <laughs> You're a Tim Kennedy guy. No, uh, I actually openly mock him all the time. <laughs> now? Oh, oh yeah. You used, to be him. you used to be a Tim Kennedy guy. A big Tim, 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 get out, bleh, a big Tim Kennedy guy back in the day for sure. But then uh, all the shit he does post is real cringe. It's cringy as fuck. It's so cringy. I think it's fake military shit. I haven't seen it. No, he's definitely special forces. Uh, in fact, one of our buddies, no names, uh, actually has met him in the DFAC at Fort, B- at Fort Bragg. Good God. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, the DFAC is the dining facility in the Army. And if you don't know who Tim Kennedy is, he used to be a UFC fighter. He's also... Had great fights. And, uh, he's also he's special a, forces. He's a special guy, forces. Yeah, and he was special forces, but he just... He can get a little crazy. He was on the show, you know, find... Or what was it? Finding Hunting Hitler. Hitler. Hunting Hitler. What? Which, honestly... <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> it was an interesting show. He but. he definitely there was a lot of I mean there really were a lot of Nazis who escaped to South there America. There is a there are communities that are German in Argentina. Well, who do you think the Nazis got their ideas from? 
the Argentinians. Why do you think there are no black people in Argentina? <laughs> It's very true. I don't know anything about Argentina. Actually, that blue Cole's mom. Yeah, <laughs> look at him over there. The subtle whoa. <laughs> uh, I have a very good friend, Marsan. I will not say last names. Right. Uh, Marsan, very into uh, Black history. I mean, and he was telling me all about this at uh, work one time, and he's done his very well uh, uh, researched history. And I was like, well, holy shit! About Argentina? Uh, just Black history in general. Oh. And where people get ideas about as far as neo Nazi uh, thoughts and subjects and everything. And you know, well, there's some shit in Argentina that they, they don't, do not like black people. They don't. Which is wild. It's freaking crazy. I've never noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> he blew my mind when he said that. I was like, holy shit, man. So, so yeah. It's, but yeah, I, I, look, I'm going to tell you right now that I, I voted for Trump and I'll probably vote for him again. And I'll tell you why. Uh, Bombshells. <laughs> Here we go. Well, it's not ba- – I mean, look, uh, my dad requires the coal fields to be uh, flowing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can definitely remember during Obama's uh, presidency where he was like, I'm home, no pay, no work. He said, well, I don't know how long I'm going to be li- off. I mean, and that just happened. And so I, mean, I don't agree on a lot of things Trump does, but it, – It's more than just – Rhetoric. You have to be able to eat. And my dad and them never grew up. They didn't have the ability to go to school and get a degree. And he's been at Carter since he was 21, and he's 50-some now. Mm. He's been there for years. There is no change in positions for him. There is no going back to school. There's no restarting. He can't push that start button again. I mean, you have to pick the person that benefits you, benefits 100%. your family. And we all know that Trump's a piece of shit. Oh, I, I think he's a horrible person, probably. And like, would he I like is this? A con man. Would I yeah. love to sit down and have a beer with him? Absolutely. But I'd also say <laughs> the same for Obama. Right. I think they would be two right. very different conversations, but both entertaining. My thing with Trump is he's a shitty person, and his immature behavior does divide the country. That's why I'm somewhat against him. But the Democratic Party. C- yeah. C- this him, is why there okay. needs to be more party. Trump and. Fucking Biden. Biden can't speak. He doesn't know where he is. That's why I said, I love you all, Vermont. He was in Connecticut. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He didn't even know he was running for president. And he right? said he was running for Senate. Yeah. And At he, least Trump is, like, sharp. I mean, he's still... He is sharp. He has to be sharp. He's a businessman. He's got yes. his mental facilities. And what makes me sad about Biden is that they're just letting him flounder. It's, it's really like watching sad. your it's grandfather. It's like it's, watching your grandfather yeah, up there. Sad. I don't think Biden's a bad person. No, not at all. I, well, it's he's well, had questionable with choices. With the little kids. Uh, it's weird. <laughs> he's done questionable things. But I think it's like watching your grandfather up there struggle to like figure out what's going but on. The media and the grandkids are just like, go on, you're fine. Keep yeah. going. It's Keep going to your death. It's the media. Yeah, it they is won't the media. Pointed out. <clears throat> like podcast media, Com- Hollywood comedy are making fun of him like like crazy right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, 100%. But you won't hear none of it no, yeah, on yeah. TV media. Well, they're, they're busy with coronavirus. 100%. I mean, that right now, well, the coronavirus thing is that they're actually, they're, they're trying to use it and point out fallacy in Trump's policies, but I mean, that's, both parties p- fucked up on this one. Yeah. I mean, Nancy Pelosi, uh, fucking she, tire. She get out of here. Yeah, yeah, she needs to get the fuck out of there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's been there far. Ram, long. Ram Paul, uh, is that his name? Get the fuck out of there. <laughs> you dumb <laughs> idiot. Get over coronavirus and then get the fuck out of there. Well, do you guys want to segue? Um, speaking got, of Trump? If you got some topics, throw them out. All yeah, right. Spit them out. Speaking of Trump. Oh, we're getting fun with it now. All right. The, the phenomenon, Tiger King. I <clears throat> thought we weren't going to talk about Tiger King. We weren't going to talk about Tiger King, but now it's gotten to a point where you, well, first off, you have to. Has Matthew seen Tiger King? One hundred percent. Okay, thank God. I, I was like, I had, I was like, what the fuck is this? And then I got into it. First off, I don't know if you all follow that Leslie. My man's Leslie. Leslie, yeah. Did you watch <laughs> yes. the one today where he's like, "Oh, poor meth mouth. Yes. Ain't got no teeth in his head. <laughs> you gotta get camera ready. You can't do nothing about your teeth." I'm talking about how but put a shirt, shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, but he is amazing. I've watched Tiger King. I hate. Everyone on that show. 100%. I told people, I was like, I know what those people smell like. Like, you know? Like, because you've met these people here. Yeah. You, you know who they are I here. I thought about that. You know what they, what they smell like. You know what they smell like. You know a lot of them smell like fucking black and mild. <laughs> and all... 
<laughs> and old people. I smell like Black and Miles every now and then. <laughs> but yeah, the only one I liked was the zookeeper at, at the Oklahoma Zoo. The long-haired blonde guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. forgot his name. Um, Real quick, do you think Carol fed her fucking husband to the tiger? Absolutely. If she didn't feed him to the tiger, absolutely. she definitely had him killed. That's why I brought this up, because <laughs> um, they're adding a new episode. Supposedly. I think supposedly next week. That's what Jeff Lowe said, but he's a fucking liar. <laughs> you can just tell he's dirty. Well, he wears I, Affliction shirts in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Bandanas with a hat on. <laughs> what do you think? He, what do you think Jeff Lowe smells like? I can tell you right now. Bod body spray. Yes. And fucking regular monster. Yeah. With the occasional. That's what goes to his veins. Monster. Right. With the occasional marble light. <laughs> It's the gold pack. Stereotypes. <laughs> well, I think didn't Netflix yes. didn't didn't Netflix announce that they? I haven't seen anything. I just saw his. his I, I thought I saw some, but I saw I, it was yeah. I, I could be wrong. Post, I'm 100 percent positive. Go ahead. Anyways, <laughs> during a uh, Trump speech, I think it was a White House briefing. briefing. Yes, White House briefing. That official that has the great ratings. <laughs> yeah. Because that's the only thing we can fucking watch. That CNN <laughs> didn't. That CNN didn't broadcast. Of course. Right, so um. Well, anyways. It was this uh, Los Angeles Times article that uh, I just popped up, it says, it has come to this. Will Trump pardon Joe Exotic from Tiger King? There is a, I guess, a journalist that asked uh, Trump. Asking if, the important questions asked, at these White House briefings. <laughs> if, if he ever watched Tiger King, and he's like, I'm aware of it, but I have not watched it. Well, he's going to look into the Joe whole Exotics. story of Joe Exotic. I fucking hope so. I- because, honestly, 22 years... Don't you think that's a little much? Well, look, he killed what was it, six? Five? I'm a, I think it was he. Ex- I remember he wait, euthanized what six tigers. Mm-hmm. And he definitely didn't go to jail for the no, but it, supposed you know hitman. Yeah, that he bought. twenty-two years for six tigers. Uh, that, from what I understand, two grand could get me a fucking baby tiger. Which he fucking told us. Holy shit! Is that true? Yes. I don't know. Yes. I've never Texas ran. Texas has so many tigers. Yes. I've never ran the price of a tiger, but. <laughs> I've been like, wonder, like, just a quick he get, Google search. He should get six months for a tiger. Three years. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. You know, there's actually more tigers here in the United States than there are in the wild. Captivity, yeah. Yeah. Um, Joe Rogan told me that before the, the, yeah. the Tiger King even came out. What I would really like to know is, they were like, all right, man, this is your one chance to go into the White House briefing. Tom was sick today. You've got <laughs> one shot. One opportunity. And he goes, and but he's just like, so what's your question? And then he feeds him some bullshit, and he's like, I'm going to fucking ask Trump about uh, Tiger King. And, he, and Trump's response was like, I'll look into it. He's like, he First. fucking got Rocky out of fucking sweet he jail did. in Sweden. He, he did. could get Tiger King out. This would be the craziest thing ever. I would be. If he really did 2020 look into it. Yes. 100%. 100%. We are in April of 2020, and uh, it's fucking wild. I want to do a, it. Is. If, if you guys want to, I want to do a 2020 recap. Right now. Half. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right fucking now. All it's right. the longest year. I've ever had. And we're four months in. Yes. Man, we got the fork and court canceled. We got all our fun Dude, shit for the Kobe spring canceled. Kobe died? That was going to get to that. Yeah. Kobe, died, okay, Kobe with... died six years ago. <laughs> Kobe died six years ago. <laughs> Lay off the mic just a little bit. <laughs> Kobe died six fucking years ago today. Let's go back. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> January 2020. Let's start. Dude. Roll into the new year. Everything's pretty fucking good. It's... It, was a, it was a tremendous New Year's night. Right? I puked. I don't think you, I did. You were off a zen. <laughs> off a zen pouch. Matthew Gillespie, off a zen. You're right. I, oh, you first were? time he'd ever put one in. Fucking shoveled nachos into my mouth. <laughs> you were. I was, them with I his was hands. watching you, and your fingers were all up in that shit. <laughs> okay, <laughs> first off, back it up, back it up. I was so fucking trash. <laughs> <laughs> we I, all were. Trash, I was like, off a zen. He was everything. Mm. I was like, I'm going to just fucking shell these nachos in. Which also, I'd like to say, I'm fucking down 20 pounds since then. Nice. That is another thing I'd like to talk about, the fitness in 2020. But yeah. I'd like to recap the fuck out of this. So, year. January, mm. we go pretty solid month, I would say, actually. Yeah. I don't remember anything month. bad. Today. Until Kobe's fucking helicopter. We got new jobs. Was... But what, yeah, that wasn't got... in January, was it? That was February. What? No, it was like... Kobe died, the, Kobe died when we got back from Raleigh, which was in January. Okay, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Okay, but January. Good month up until the end. Yeah. Uh, Shocking. Fucking crazy. Wait, I'll Wait we're, we're, gonna, we're forgetting about something. What? 
World War Three. Oh, with shit. Iran. You're yeah. right. With Iran. Oh, yes. That was in 2012. That so was 10 much, years ago today. So much shit, dude. That was 10 years ago today. Oh, my so God. Soleimani. <laughs> Actually. Oh, like, do you remember Twitter during that? Actually, I'm glad we, I didn't I'm glad get we on dunked Twitter. on that fucker, so... Fuck him. He's been killing Americans since 2003. He I got mean, what he yeah, deserved. we'll get that out of the way. It, it needed to happen. That needed to happen. I had no problems with it. But World War Three. The memes? The memes alone? That happened in 2022. Like, I didn't I didn't want to get on... <laughs> <laughs> he's in I'm getting fired up. Like, I, didn't wanna get, I didn't want to get on Twitter because I kept seeing stuff like that. Those memes were fucking hilarious. They were hilarious. I loved them. Dude, but it stressed me out. coronavirus said, see ya. <laughs> see ya. Okay, February. Talk about me now. Okay, so Kobe, end of January, end of February. That Kobe and Did, World War Three happened in January. Yeah, but what else happened in February? Nothing. We kind of chilled. I think Kobe's death carried all through February. I'm going to be honest. Kobe's morning was... Mm, February yeah. was Kobe's month. We got Kobe's month. Honestly, appropriate month. We should just make it vote Kobe month. February is Kobe now Kobe. I agree. Kobe Black wary. History Month. Kobe like Kobe wary. Kobe wary. <laughs> Kobe wary. <laughs> it's, not, it's the shortest month. Give him a month. month yeah. <laughs> yes. He deserves Let's it. just go ahead and, and drop it down to 24. <laughs> <laughs> 24 days. We don't need the other four days in February. It's already shortened anyway. Fuck it. Leap year comes around, we'll add that four days back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll add five days back on leap years. But for Kobe, these overwhelming tributes he got, 24 days in February. Fair enough. Everything. So we Everything run, was tribute to Kobe. We run, run to March. March, it's over. Yeah. March yeah. 7th was the last UFC event. Oh my yeah, God. style bender. Well, they had the one in Brazil that had no fans. The week after, the week after. <laughs> that's fucking depressing. <laughs> but the last thing that had fans that I remember was the style bender fight yeah. on the seventh of March. Yeah. So. And then it all came to an end. Thanks, China. You fucks. I remember the last time we went out, we went to Macadoos. It was a little get together at work, like work buddies. That was before everything shut down. Yep. So right we, before March seventh, Corona. It was a Saturday. Yeah. That's the day the world that stopped. We're going to go from, a, uh, you know, B, C, A, D, A, C. C, V. Coronavirus. Oh, you're just going to go straight coronavirus? Yeah. I was going to say, you know, after COVID. <laughs> like, when this goes over. COVID. I think it's just coronavirus. Actually, no, I think we go um, B, K before Kobe, and then A, K <laughs> after Kobe. Dude, <laughs> this has been the longest decade of my life. It has. Um, Since January. But world, no. world War Three. Thank you. We, you guys forgot about that. I did. Until I brought it up. Holy shit. Yeah. I forgot about the excellent... I, I swear to God, the memes that come out of there. 10 out of 10. Yeah. But it's crazy. It really is. I mean, uh, March... I, you know what I hope happens? They stack our, our fall up, though. I hope our fall, fall gets stacked Oh, our up. fall is getting stacked with sports and I hope they bring the events. fork and cork back up into they're not, September. They're September. Not, they're having, you know, brew day like they... That's their fall thing. But I want to drink wine. I just want to go out to eat with everybody. Cowboy hat. Yeah. That shit was fucking you gotta fire. Got to rip the cowboy hat. I your do. Truck, your new truck with your cowboy boots. I'm actually gonna wear that cowboy hat to my cousin's wedding. <laughs> Tremendous. You want to see the picture? I'll yeah. show you the picture. It looks fucking good. Your of your cowboy hat or your outfit? Just my outfit. Oh, you already planned out your outfit. You got them right. <laughs> we gotta post this on the Instagram page. Your little outfit. I gotta see it. <laughs> That's, That's amazing. Outfit. Dude, you look like you're off of that movie Anchorman with Will Ferrell. Yes. That's what I thought. I thought that. <laughs> My God. That's the reception People outfit. got to see that. That's the reception sure. outfit. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna actually gonna wear my nice suit right. that we got uh, for the actual wedding. But when I'm going to the reception, because I'm gonna fucking get out there and bust a move. Hell yes. Save a horse, ride a cowboy. I'm gonna get out there. Save a horse, ride Matthew Gillis. Horses are gonna be in the back. Wow, there's a, there's a lot of country songs right there that everyone just made references to. Even Lil Nas, that's country as fuck. Yeah, hundred percent. America. I still gotta find a date though. We'll get on that. Yeah, we'll get on that. Yeah. We'll get on that after the podcast. Yeah, actually. we'll talk about that later, but we'll figure yeah. it out. But if if Justin wants to keep going with the events, the current events. All right, let's see. I just I I had to recap 2020 with y'all. That was yeah, a little short. I had to, be to done. get you guys. It's up also to speed. crazy that three months: January, February, March. That's it. <laughs> that's our recap. <laughs> Because we're st- we just rolled into April. Well, another event that we thought was going to happen was UFC 249. Oh fuck! Don't even. And it was going to be Tony versus Khabib, which is the fight everybody just wants to see. Well, it's the fight that's never going to happen. It's never. never gonna, that was the fifth time for it to try to make it happen, and it just didn't happen. So Dana White was like working his ass off to trying to even throw an event, which is. 
irresponsible as fuck. It is, but it's but ballsy. I love it. Yes. <laughs> the effort. You know, I'll give, I'll give you, a, I'll give you a hand. He balled an island. UFC two forty nine should just be called Mortal Kombat with a K. Absolutely. <laughs> well, he had a stacked card. So many fucking fights with so many good fighters. Right. Well, it was yesterday, I think. Yeah. News broke. Disney pulled Disney the plug on it. Pulled the plug because fuck Disney, fuck everything, <laughs> fuck them all. The no funds. Yeah, they yeah, really PG are. fuckers. You Mickey Mouse loving sons of bitches. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Definitely influenced by China. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck you, China. I mean, if all the fighters Not were the going Chinese to get... people, the government. The, guy, the, the fucking communist capitalism that they have is yes. crazy. If, I mean, if the fighters were going to get tested for this coronavirus, they're all come clean, everything would be fine, I, I assumed. Which, I mean, shit, they could have it. They could. 80% I, of young mm, people don't show symptoms. But I'm sure they were going to be tested. 100%. Though. I need to get deeper into the issues. Yeah. There's a couple podcasts about UFC 249 that I haven't listened to that I'm going to this weekend. But right now my thinking is it's it was irresponsible to even try it. But Maybe. that's just me. What about WrestleMania? Nah. They had no fans. It was, it was filmed weeks ago. It was it was not live. That's true. It was filmed in the last week of March. Fair but enough. was it it was still during the corona. It was. Though. It was. But they they did film it weeks ago before yeah. the orders of, you know, I think Dana had good intentions because what I'm hearing from, like, for example, other podcasts, that he would be the the front runner to bring, you know, sports events, back into our sports lives. back into our lives. Him and Vince McMahon. Yep. Two legends. <laughs> Absolutely. But unfortunately, this it's been postponed. At. This is where we're at. So a podcast I listen to, they're talking about bets right now. So they have a a, a promo. Um, my bookie, I think, is the actual yeah. their website. All the the bets you can place now are on NBA 2K games being played. So players playing their own character on video games. On video games, it's all video game bets. Mm. It's Which like is NASCAR. Crazy. They're running virtual NASCAR races. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's virtual. The esports have to be making a killing right now. hundred percent. It's literally video games and podcasts. It is. <laughs> Look at where we're at. <laughs> Paul Rudd meme. Paul Rudd meme. Oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> Look at us. Do you ever think... Look at look us. us. Look at us. Do you ever think we'd get here? <laughs> no. Not but we're right. here. Four years in the making. Yeah. Yep. God, four years. I bet it's older than that. I bet it's 2015. No. I remember how small I was in the picture compared to what I am now. I remember how large I was in the picture compared to now. So Fair enough. I was a big... Body changes. That's what I want to talk about, too. Fitness. Our fitness goals in 2020, they were going... I mean, I won't say that they've been off the rails right. they're still going mine is yeah. actually increasing. all of our friends are working out our and it's, late Matthew's been working out too our lazy friends started working out I'm not going to mention I'm not going to mention names I was about to I'm not going <laughs> to mention names but we got off to a great start yeah and I just hope these guys keep it up I don't know fitness in 2020 took off and I, I'm going to tell you right now my goals have actually gotten better I'm actually almost I'm 8 pounds away from where I was when I left the cadets Dude, I've gained twenty pounds. You needed to gain those twenty pounds. I did. Too. I've it's increased. Kind of I've increased pounds. my yeah. pull-ups, so I can. I, I work out my weighted vest, right? I can now do ten non-weighted vest pull-ups. Right. Hell yeah. I so mean, I mean, our. I, I noticed something earlier though. When I went running, I don't run a lot anymore. I used to be a marathon running. You, know, you did fifty k. Fuck. A couple. <laughs> a couple. And a training couple. and training for those. You're, you're running 20 mile training yeah. sessions. That's what I'm trying. Like I'm I trying to, to do. I'm wanting to do marathons. I'm going to tell you what. Since I changed my physique, and I felt so flabby after. Like I did. I was not tight. Uh huh. What? Why does running do that to fit people? If you're if you're bigger or if you have more body fat, running is essential and it and it sheds it. Why when you're, a, you know, a tighter more muscle mass person why does it make you feel like that so what do you mean make you feel like what i felt like i looked in the mirror and i just i didn't look tight i didn't look so i was like flat so what you're but it was after my it, like an hour or so later you know i was i was back but. so the thing is uh, muscle is the first thing to get basically i'm gonna say basically eaten. that's a very general way to describe it so when your body needs energy it's gonna pull from fat storages if you have excess fat storages. 
sometimes, not always. That's not a guarantee. And definitely people who listen to this who may have some sort of health background would definitely disagree with right. with that. Right, we're just dumb sons of bitches. Go ahead. But they definitely, exactly. but because you, your stomach's not going to get pulled to all that. But if you notice, run, runners are so lean, especially those ultra runners, because they can eat anything. It gets almost instantly metabolized. I was going to talk about like runner bodies. Well, they're, they're not always shredded. They don't need so much muscle. They don't. They basically the muscle they have is. I wouldn't say just enough, but it's just enough. You, the, no, first off, excess muscle makes you heavy, mm-hmm. and it makes it harder to run longer because it requires more oxygen, which means you got to breathe harder. But also, it's going to eat that muscle. Yeah, I felt like it did that today. So it eats that muscle and, I didn't run and very turns long it either. to energy. Now, that may just be the way you're feeling because you're feeling it some sort of um, some sort of like pull, like the way it's you know you're feeling drained and stuff. Right. But over long periods of time, that's 100% what will happen. Yeah, that's why I'm afraid to get back into long-distance running, because well, of the physique I built it, we, not it, doing it. You'll, you'll definitely you're lose full it. WWE right now. What do you mean? Like, you are you just want to get fucking jacked. Yeah, that's the goal. But, like, yeah. if I got back into heavy running like that, it would just kill all my, my, my strides. Well, see, I'm looking to, to get actually, like, smaller down, like, 200. Yeah, and that requires... Running. Running. Hmm. But I'm, I'm not honest. telling people not to run. I'm just saying that that, that was what happened to me today. <laughs> <laughs> but like honest, but if you go out there and like I'll, I'm running now, but I'm also doing pull ups and push ups, so my shoulders have stayed pretty defined. My right. arms have stayed pretty right. defined. We just got to get creative during this, you know. Yeah, during this time. What That's what I've been doing. I did I did an Instagram workout today. I, I have two 25 pound dumbbells, a jump rope, and a weighted vest. You just got to get creative. And you just got to go at it. I did yeah. an Instagram workout today. I don't ever look at Instagram for workouts. And I'm not going to give away my workout spot, but it is fucking sweet because it has pull-up bars, it has tires, and, it, and it's awesome. You're not going to hook us up? I may tell you all after the podcast. Uh-huh. I, got, I got a small I can, dojo anyways. Yeah, I've been working out with Steve I can't tell you all. the I other room. I can't let people know because if they figure out where it is, it's definitely available to anyone. Right. And it's real right. easy, and I just don't want a bunch of fucking people there. Yeah, so fuck y'all. Sorry. <laughs> so if you got some more events that you want to talk about? Um, well, you sent me something about, uh, let's see, Apple and Google. Oh, yeah. Which it's. Oh, tracking people? Yeah, something. I don't know enough about this, but I, I need to know some details. Okay, so the, the biggest concern for me now. In, in... In, wait, let's just get the premise. Why? Why? So, in theory. This is a good thing. You can track people who may have come in. So in epidemiology, you want to try to trace it back and figure it out. Uh, figure out who may be causing the spread of it. And they may unknowingly be spreading it or purposely. And at which point you need to isolate and arrest those people. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in theory, in epidemiology, this is a good way to track people back. Um, case study I did in our ep- my epidemiology class was someone who had given... <sighs> people at Rafford and JMU uh, AIDS and Hep C because he'd been giving out tattoos and he was reusing needles and he was also trading fa- sexual favors for tattoos. Is that somebody that we know? No. It, no. We do know somebody that, that, that did that. You do? Yes. You'll have to tell me that, but go ahead. Yeah, well, well, you'll have, have to, to tell me that later. Yeah. But this was back in probably like 07, 05. Oh, okay. No. And they gave it to over 100 Rafford students and JMU students. And that's how they were able to track it back. So in theory, this is what you would want to do with this app, is figure out who's showing symptoms and track it back to who they've talked to. And that way you can create a web of people who they've talked to. But, but this might be an excuse to limit our for freedoms? For future Absolutely. tyranny? A hundred percent. That's the big thing that I don't like now about the COVID. COVID, is that how you say it? That's how I say it. I'm just fucking COVID. Right. Covid is that it is in fact limiting our freedoms just as the Patriot Acts did. You know, you use the disguise of a natural disaster or a natural a national emergency as a way to limit freedoms, and it's not necessarily thought about of in the moment. Like right now, it's not like they're like, we need to, you know, this is what we can do to control these people better. But in down the future, it may eventually become that because these systems are in place. Dude, where's our next Edward Snowden at? For all this, where is he? I'll be honest. It's probably someone in Congress. That's our next Edward Snowden. Mm. Which anyway, whistleblower. F- fuck those people who traded their stocks right before the big COVID hit because they yep. made a bunch of money off of it. Yep. 
But anyway, that's the type of shit I don't like. And I do not like the limiting of freedoms, uh, basic, especially personal ones. And I believe it was either Thomas Jefferson or Benjamin Franklin who said, um, if you give up your freedom for more security, you're deserving of neither. God damn, Thomas Jefferson or Ben Franklin. <laughs> one of those two. I think it was Thomas Jefferson, I'm going to be honest. But it was one of those two. I definitely, that's a quote. Yeah, that Ben Franklin just flew a fucking kite around. He probably didn't say that. <laughs> He Jesus. might have said it. I don't know. I don't know. I'm He's right. aggravating I'm Ben Frank. <laughs> <laughs> the man who's been dead for whatever two hundred years. I'm busting your balls, Ben Frank. We hey, can hey, now. Hey, it's fine. Hey, Benny, don't worry about it. He's uh, dead. He created electricity, maybe. I don't fucking no, know. He just he didn't create electricity. He's definitely just discovered how electricity is charges. I'm a shit. dumb son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm just rambling <laughs> with a zen in. Yeah. Uh, Matthew, do you want some more whiskey? I do not. I'm gonna get um, some. <laughs> God. The audience is going to hear that. Some Eagle Rose. You have fun with all that shit. Yep. You have fun with all that it shit. is Benjamin Franklin. Ben Franklin? See, see I'll just give you a Sorry, man. TJ. <laughs> yeah, Thomas Jefferson, you just sit in your fucking house in Charlottesville. Shut up. Wasn't Thomas Jefferson like a piece of shit? He, yeah, man. definitely. Uh, that Dave Chappelle skit. I think it's Dave Chappelle. Or maybe Key and Pill. I, I don't, don't remember. remember. Where it's like, I'm a descendant of Thomas Jefferson. And it's a... Like, one black person to every, like, one white person. It's a fucking hilarious. <laughs> He's had sex with a lot of his slaves. slaves. Yeah. Anyway, the exact quote is, Those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's true. Why don't we refer to our forefathers anymore? We refer to the Constitution all the time. The Constitution is definitely a good guideline. Do you for think the Constitution needs to be updated? How so? Uh, Some people think it needs to be rewritten yeah. for modern times. But it, to me, it's just like a a moral doctrine. Anyway. It's definitely along that lines. It gives you the, the... It's definitely dated, for sure. However, I mean, that's what you you know your Bill of Rights and your amendments and all that are for. Yeah. I mean, definitely there are things that shouldn't be touched. Freedom of speech, you know, freedom to bear arms, you know. Yeah, that's the The big first, one. second, third, Actually, fourth, and fifth amendment. Like, the, the bear arms... The Second Amendment, you know, is where we're at, really, is the most popular topic. The First yeah. Amendment's being taken. It's 100%. It's restricted. Uh, yes. It's being taken. <laughs> that Zen's hitting him. I didn't touch it, but I'm fine. <laughs> His mic fell. That's going to be fun to listen to. Sorry, yes. audio listeners. Yeah. And they're now trying there to There we go. We got to fix now. Uh, the, the First Amendment is... Uh, definitely being limited. It's uh, when people say you can't say things, they limit your. The way the First Amendment is covered is that you should be able to say what you want, but that doesn't mean you're not going to get your ass kicked for it. <laughs> mm-hmm. So definitely, if you want to be a hateful little asshole who's a racist piece of shit, go quite ahead. There are a lot of people out there who will beat the fuck out of you. Rightly so. No. Yeah, but now we're taking away basic, hundred percent basic sayings, basic demonstrations, like. I don't even know how com- comedy right now is fucking flourishing. Because people are tired of that shit. Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now. That's their job. I'm going to tell you another thing. Uh, you know, the whole, with the Second Amendment thing, I'm telling you, you want to hold on to that one. That it definitely ensures all the others. Because, you know, people talk about, well, what are you going to do with an AR against a jet or a tank? Well, let me tell you what the Taliban have been doing for the last uh, ten years, mm. or the uh, or Al Qaeda, or the Viet Cong, or the NVA, or any other guerrilla agency that we fought. They they definitely. I mean, guerrilla warfare is a real thing, and it don't matter how technologically advanced you are, people still fall for punji stakes. Now, do you? Is there like a uh, is there a stat or something where gun Purchasing has increased during this coronavirus. Oh, 100%. It definitely has. Yeah. I mean, people who don't care for, they're not gun advocates, are buying guns. The thing is, people talk shit on firearms until it's time to protect your stuff. And then, and then it's like, uh, and then it's like, I need something to protect me and mine. Right. And instincts kick in. Instincts kick in, for sure. For sure. And, uh, you know, it's just, you know, people talk about 
the AR platform, which is just a weapon system that shoots a very tiny caliber round. The reason that it is, the reason that it was, again, sent to, it's the military weapon is because it was the cheapest made at the time. And in fact, when it was serviced in Vietnam, it was so shitty that everyone hated it in the jungle because they didn't get any field cleaning kits issued with it. So it would jam, it would break, and they couldn't use it. And in fact, the round is, the round is so small the only reason we carry it is because it is light and it f- flies fast. So mm. It's a fast fire it, because it's so small it moves fast. Um, however, if you look at our counterpart, the 762 by 39 and the 51, 762 by 51, which is uh, AKs and SKs, SKSs, is that thing will rip through body armor. That thing will punch out through, it'll punch through walls and all that, and but it tumbles. And it's f- a round that goes through clean is a far is a less deadly around than one that tumbles. Mm-hmm. So the heavier the round, the more damage it actually does. I got a gun under my bed. <laughs> I got one out in my truck right now. Oh, He's hell got yeah. a gun in his new truck. Jesus. He bought f- the truck today. You're so fucking American, dude. Gun in it. <laughs> You're so fucking American. <laughs> uh, look. You got the mustache. <laughs> He's got the fucking blue jeans. Blue the jeans. Brett Favre blue jeans. Fucking cowboy boots. I don't know. I think these are old Navy. <laughs> I'll Wrangler. I'll take that back. I do have Wranglers for my work pants. <laughs> Dell Junior Wranglers. <laughs> <laughs> I see you grow your hair out. I am. I'm growing it out. That's a thing that we took for granted. Essential workers that are not working yes. right now, and it's barbershops. Yes. I need a fucking haircut. I do, too. I just I look plan like on growing it out anyway. Shit. I don't like going into work with this fucking hairdo right now. I haven't, I'm going to be honest, I haven't washed my hair in a week I've been doing because bandana. I ran out of fucking hair gel. Damn. Bandana. I've been bandana it up. i got to like wear a bandana Rambo over my style. face now. Rambo Wait, style. so you're looking like like that low guy from fucking... No, I look Tiger way Jeff fucking Lowe. cooler. Jeff Lowe? No, he's a fuckhead. I'm so yeah, you know, fuck Matthew doesn't wear affliction. Yeah, I used to. <laughs> you kind of <laughs> grow out of it yeah. with Jeff Lowe. <laughs> Not him. Because <laughs> GSP wore it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. You know, I just grow my fucking hair out because I want to. Yeah. I had been planning on it anyway, and then the corona, the old corona. It motivated you. It kept, I was like, well, fuck it. You got to now. It gets curly. My hair's getting curly. I wish I had curls in my hair. If I had a better beard, I would shave my head bald. Fair enough. Mm. My beard's not thick enough. Your beard's not bad. What actually? It's not thick. Not thick enough for a bald head. I don't know. I need, to, I need to grow the beard out before I cut the hair. I wish I had ta- more tattoos, like tattoos. Yeah. Because then I would definitely... Do you even have tattoos? I, yeah, tattoo? I was going to go get one, and this goddamn corona shit. fucked it up. Hey, I got one right before that shit happened. Bastards. <laughs> <laughs> See, the COVID is taking everything from us. Yep. I was getting a whole fucking partial chest piece into a like half sleeve. Fuck yeah. Yeah. I, learned, I got the nickname uh, The Bear in Honduras. You were called the bear? That's what they called me. That's right. El Oso. You, you about to say Oso? El Oso. El Oso Blanco. The, the white, white bear. bear. <laughs> <laughs> no, they just called me the bear. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. yeah. I definitely was like what they thought of Americans. I was definitely it. That's what I was. Mm. And they loved it. <laughs> I love those. My, they fucking, do they probably come up to my fucking, uh, my shoulders. Mm-hmm. But they are stout as fuck. My boy Jose. Mm-hmm. Is, Doubt as shit. Shout out to our boy Jose in Honduras. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Jose. Uh, there's no way you're listening to this because you definitely only speak Spanish, but. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't. Well, three years of Spanish didn't do it for me. One and I a half. I just know how to read it. One and a half. I just know how to read it. I get drunk and speak, sing Spanish songs. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, actually. Uh, the. <laughs> like Carlos Santana shit? No, it's like legit, like Mexican. Mexican restaurant uh, music? Oh, shit. Uh, so there's a style of dance called the bachata that bachata. it's fucking awesome. Look it up. I'm learning it. Mm-hmm. And um, there is a group, and if there's any Latina ladies out here, you'll know who I'm about to mention. It's Aventura. And my favorite song by them is Obsession or Un Beso. <laughs> what? He's definitely beat off the Shakira ones. <laughs> Haven't we all? <laughs> I did after the Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that shit is 
fire. And then um, Extreme with an X, definitely. X, T R E M E. And then um, they, they, they fucking are awesome too. I mean, what is that? Extreme? Extreme. They, uh, they are a bachata like group. And then Hablame de Ti, which is a legit like old school Mexican like tubas and everything and i get shit faced to that music <laughs> matthew is a man of culture multi-cultured man he is i wish i was but he's a legend well i am and i'm <laughs> you guys heard it today well you know, different levels of uh, no. taste testing you some would say no. <laughs> no. oh you'll definitely be back on the show <laughs> yeah multiple times you got anything else you want to talk about, Teddy? Yeah. Uh, that's about it. How, how, how long have we been going? I just uh, want to know. I don't really it know. It feels like to, it's two hours. It, it, it's been it's a while. around an hour. Well, there's <laughs> got to be more than that. 10.15. Huh? 10.15 right now. 10.15. The old we've gatekeeper's been, giving us... We've been going on for a while, I think. I don't know. It's close to two hours. Yeah. Well, let's... All right. Let's wrap when it did up. you think? When do you think this coronavirus is going to end and things are going to well, start coming back to normal? If the summer gets as hot as it's expected to, I think it's going to help. Because, you think so? Yeah, because the heat. I'm is, hearing mixed emotions. Is what treats it. Mm. I saw somebody the other day got mad on Twitter. This is just people on Twitter. Oh boy. Oh fuck. They got mad at the Masters getting rescheduled for November because that's when the virus is going to come back. That person. Is a retard. <laughs> <laughs> the virus is gonna come back. And I They're afraid just, of it. It's in November. I definitely just said that that R word, and I I realize that I definitely did people of uh, no, mental no. disabilities a disservice because that person is worse. They they are absolutely fucking idiotic, stupid. I mean, yes. so dumb. Yes. Take it easy, people. I'm hoping <laughs> I'm hoping June we're we're back to normal. Yeah. I feel uh, like I've given up on that. If they get, if it gets as hot as it's supposed to, uh, it's gonna help because it's gonna like it, it'll die on a super hot surface. So things like cars steel. and steel and stuff, which well, which apparent, which hold it longer apparently, mm-hmm. which yeah. it lives longer on that, will it leaves kill on it. Cardboard. So yeah, so stuff like that gets hot will kill it, like metal and shit. Yeah, so I think that's really gonna help limit the the spread of the infection. All right. And I think I think July August time we will be good to go. Good Didn't you send like a, a like a graph in the chat where it's like going down? That's hospitalizations. That's not necessarily. Also, corona. our peak is supposed to be here soon. And I would also like to point. I out... I keep hearing that peak was last week, this week, two I, weeks from now. I would like yeah. to point out that the the number of deaths are there's a lot of corona related, but not corona caused. Yes. Well, Corona only. So, like, these people may have died, may have had something that may have, could have possibly killed them, but it was just sped up by Corona. So, that is, that is, that that is another thing we need to take into account as far as the numbers of deaths. Yeah. So, maybe they had pneumonia and they got Corona and they died. Well, really, it was the pneumonia that was fucking them because maybe they would have recovered. Had they just got corona? That's something to consider as well. No. Yeah. So, fellas. Do you want to wrap it up? Yeah, let's wrap it up. Let's Matthew. Wrap. Everybody, this was Matthew Gillespie. He is uh he's one of a kind. And <laughs> I haven't seen him much because I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> uh, you don't know about it. Uh, working. Uh working out. That's all we got time for now though. Save up for a fucking truck. Yeah, that must have been it. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, when I would say, like, I can't do anything, it's because I was fucking putting money away. <laughs> Literally, last, it was, it's been a month since the last time I seen him. And before that, it was like three months. That's just true. So I'm like, Matthew, where the fuck are you, man? <laughs> well, he's here, and you heard him, and yep. he'll be back again soon. He will be back. With a whole new list of topics. Yep. Thanks for having me, fellas. Yeah, and hopefully you'll be with uh, another guest, maybe Bush. I can't wait. I honestly want to have a dual Bush, Gibby, Gibster, Gillespie, Matt, Teddy, and then Steve. Rambling fest. One hundred percent. It's gonna be like the fight. It's gonna be like the fight companion. With it's our own with fight alcohol. Companion. Yes. Yes. <laughs> who's our Brian? Real quick. I just want to break down who, who's our Brian. Who's our Brian Cowan? Good question. With awkward humor. Awkward. It's like who's our Joe? 
God I think Steve's Joe. I think so too, honestly. Yeah. You're definitely Shab. Shab? I think you're Brendan Shab. Really? Yeah. Who's Bravo with the conspiracy theories? <laughs> Matthew's kind of he's got he's into his conspiracies. I'm very skeptical about a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. his level. I don't. You can't get to his level. I can't. There's no way, dude. I can't just. I cannot be like one of those like people who just like dive into like Sandy Hook or like shit like that. Like oh, that, fuck that shit. That dude. shit's like. I'll I'm stay like, away from them rabbit holes. I'm like yeah. I can't do that. But like, skepticism is. Hell. I like healthy skepticism. Yeah. And I also hate uh, blatant disregard for public health. <laughs> <laughs> Like that guy who went to that fucking for, to watch his wife d- uh, during delivery, and he had the fucking coronavirus. He had the corona and was in the room while his wife was giving birth and didn't tell the doctors he had corona when he oh, knew he had it. Piece of shit. It's, yeah, it's, it's just a hard, selfish situation. It is. Uh, but God, after thinking about it, I think it's selfish. It, it is. is. Yeah. Put your wife and get at risk like that. Anyway, I'm rambling. All right. Let's let's just end it now. End it now. Yeah. We're get, we're going back to darkness. Yeah. We need you know. Let's stop this right light. now. Humor. This yeah. is a comedy podcast. Or we try to be. Well, this yeah. is a fucking dungeon. Yeah, it's Don. It's <laughs> Don. <laughs> I've been drinking way too much whiskey. All right, we're going to end it. Matthew, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. This is the Dumb Sons of Bitches podcast. And we're out. And, yeah, we're out. Uh- <laughs>